This is Will Lindsay Yada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with acclaimed artist, educator, he does it all, Joseph Cavalieri. But before we get to our interview, here is just a sneak peek at some of Joseph's incredible work. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Good to be here. Joseph, it is so great to finally meet you. Your artwork is incredible, as the audience just saw. And I want to remind them just up front that for more on Joseph's incredible work, you can see the links below. Joseph, I love the landscape of the different array of visual art you create. I guess my first question, though, first and foremost, is where did you grow up and was there a specific moment in in your childhood that visual art became something that you had an affinity for, or was it over time? I, you know, other people told me that I had the talent when I was very young. I grew up in Westchester, a little town called Pleasantville, and I remember. In I my, know it very well. I grew up did? in Pella Manor. Oh my God. Very close by. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I don't want to make this all about me. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but I, when I was like in first grade, everybody was drawing really small images. And my teacher gave me the hardest image to draw. It was like a life-size el elephant. So she saw it in me. And since then, just I, uh, it's continued with drawing and working with glass and painting. That's amazing, Joseph. And I can remember too, um, maybe it's something in the water in Westchester or maybe <laughs> towns with P that begin with P, but I just remember too, um, I think for all artists, for the ones that are lucky enough to have those teachers, that instill that confidence and encouragement. It really does go a long way. And obviously it did for you. And thank goodness you continued because your artwork has, whether it's whether it's glass, um, you know, painting, paint, paint, everything about you has a sense of whimsy about it. And it's 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 really moving emotionally. I want to know in terms of glass specifically first how that all came about, you working with glass. Yeah, so back in 2009, I took a bunch of classes at a glass center in Brooklyn called Urban Glass. And I learned the, all the techniques. Then basically I locked myself in my studio and I experimented with painting on stained glass, printing on glass, uh, airbrushing. So I got to know how to do exactly what I was visioning in my mind on glass. 
Uh, at that time, I was working full time as an art director here in New York. So I was doing it after hours. But at one point in 2010, it took over and I started to teach. I started to do art residencies and I started to make work and uh, make commissions. So I couldn't continue and my graphic design at that point. I love it. And so, in a, but in the end, in addition to the, the work that you began to create, you obviously are open and how you make a living in creating specific tailor-made pieces for people. How does that all work, Joseph? Yeah, it's a, it's very easy for me because I used to do freelance graphic design and I handle it the same way. So if a client is interested in a stained glass window, I meet them, I see what type of art they like and their color palette and pick up some stories that they liked when they were young, maybe to base the work on or other subjects. And then I give them sketches and we work from there. It's like a lot of back and forth. And then I actually create a piece and I print it out on paper, hang it in their home so they could be like, yeah, we like this or make it bigger or change the color. So it's a lot of back and forth. Did you find that during the pandemic, you were still able to kind of, I mean, thank God for technology and Zoom. Um, were you able to continue your, your working relationship with people one-on-one? -on -one? I, no, <laughs> not at all. Will, Basically, no. That's, <laughs> that was when I started to do more painting. So it's a perfect I, segue, my friend. That, I want to talk about how <laughs> this opportunity because as artists we're always pivoting if not one thing we're always going to get our creative energy out in some way the fact that you were able to take the time during these past two years now I can't believe it to go after the painting talk to me about how that all came about and um yeah yeah I was basically I had a, a small show in at the studios of Key West with my paintings and it was small work but once uh, COVID hit, I locked myself in my, <laughs> my studio again, and I bought four very large canvases. And I was like, this is a time to just concentrate on doing the most challenging and precise painting ever. Because the last time I painted was in, back in college. So I was like, let's, let's do it again. And this whole series, I'll show you one of the pieces I did during Please that Please do. Uh, this is a piece based on police cars, uh, historic police cars here in New York. And uh, it was just a very uh, big challenge. Wow. To just, there we it go. Looks it looks three-dimensional. Yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> and I wanted it to pop out from the canvas. I wanted it to be as precise and clear as- Oh my possible. gosh. It looks, like a, it, it looks like a photo. So thank you. That's my, uh, that's where I wanted it to go. So I produced, Four of these in the early days of COVID. Right. Another one. And, you know, the police uh, were high on everybody's mind. Right. So I, I decided on relating the historic police cars that I grew up with. You probably recognize these. Yep. Here in New York. Yep. And base the work on that. So that was uh, the first, uh, the first paintings I did, I did four of those. Wait, time out. That was the first since college. Right. Joseph, like, I keep, like, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> that's not like some doodle. That is incredible. I, I never had that much time that I had to be in the studio working. 
And it just was a, it was just like, okay, I have all this time and I got all the supplies and it just was like, it flowed out of you. It flew, it, yeah. It just was great to concentrate on, on those images. Well, listen, I could speak with you forever, Joseph. I want to let the audience know for more on the incredible Joseph Cavalieri and all of his work and how you can get specific tailor-made pieces of art of Joseph in your home, in your office, wherever. You can go to the links below. Joseph, I'm so excited you're coming on board this incredible new social media app. Um, I have spoken with over 150 visual artists all over the world, mainly if not in the New York City, Los Angeles, Miami area, Singapore, China, and Japan specifically as well. And to just see that all over the world in these traumatic, troubling times, that there's beauty, love, and light in this universal language of vis visual art. And the fact that you are spreading your talent now through painting as well, my goodness. Um, it's incredible. I'm so excited that we're also now connected, Joseph. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Great to be here.